Well, welcome to Tell Me More. I am Tom Hydeen, a ministry assistant here at First Reformed Church, and I am with April Beaver, who is uh, the director of our digital ministries here. And we are going to be reflecting on Pastor Tim's sermon that he gave last Sunday as part of the series, Monday Morning Missionaries. Uh, April, God's ownership over everything is a very dramatic and sweeping concept, uh, which has great impact on on those who grasp and understand it. (laughs) How have you grappled with that concept? Well, that's a good question, Tom, and I'll turn the tables back on you and ask you in just a second. But uh, when we talk about God and encompassing everything, I feel like first and foremost, that has to mean my heart. A lot of times I try to compartmentalize my heart and choose uh, the things maybe that I want versus what God wants. And I think that when we say God encompasses everything, it, it means all parts of me as well as all parts of the world, but all parts of me. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Well, sometimes it's easier to do this uh, because we work in a, a setting here at, at First Reformed where we do a lot of God talk. Yeah. And there is certainly a an effort on our part here to show kindness and forgiveness and accountability and and uh but when i've been out of this setting when i was in the military service i i did ask myself uh, how how does that apply here just by Mm -hmm. asking god to bless it or to i think it came back to what you said that i i needed to ask myself or encourage myself to to be the person that he wanted me to be in that setting, whatever it might be. So what yeah. you said is true. It starts with our own hearts, mm-hmm. and then we go on on from there. But it answers some questions, but it begs other ones, I must say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, why do you think that uh, Pastor Tim said he, he held up that dish from <sighs> Unity, the uh, mm-hmm. compartmentalized uh, meal dish, and why do you think we... So want to do that. We're so prone to compartmentalize. I I don't know, but it is true that we are prone to compartmentalize. Not only secular versus sacred, um, but even people that are not Christians compartmentalize family time versus work time. Or Uh, it's not business, it's... It's business, it's not personal, or this is my pleasure time. And and maybe it's just that life gets messy whenever you put things together, just like we don't want our food to get messy. That's why we've got the little compartments, right? Uh, life gets messy when we try to mix different elements together. And uh, we tend to, as people like rules, we tend to like boxes. And whenever we've got those compartments, we tend, it, it's a nice box for something to be in. Although sometimes when you have certain juices of food running into other foods, you can all of a sudden discover that, ooh, that was rather tasty. So you That's never true. know. Probably there's a control issue that it. We, we just sense that we have better um, understanding of what's happening and how it all interacts with each other when, mm-hmm. when we can say that this is work and this is church and this is family. And, um, but I don't think God wants us to be doing that. Well, and I, I think that that's when we get into um, being not authentic, when we can separate and uh-huh. say, this is how we are at church. This is how we are at work. This is how, how we are at home. We live different lives. Uh-huh. And uh, a lot of times we, we like to do that because then we're playing a part or we are conforming to what we feel like we're supposed to in the moment. But it's not living authentic to who we are or who God's made us to be. And... Um, we get really hypocritical and not a person of integrity or character when we separate ourselves that way. seems like we could point the finger and, and uh, just uh, 
let it be known that someone else isn't living up to those standards when we when we do that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. April, well, I was thinking also, what do you think would be some warning signs that we are putting God in a compartment? Mm, good question, Tom. Uh, probably when we are not living uh, with character or integrity, in certain parts of our lives, that's probably a big warning sign. When you see yourself compromising your values, uh, that's probably a big warning sign that you're not uh, being true to who God made you to be in maybe the secular environment. What are some other thoughts? Well, I have a a prayer book that I I go through, uh, try to do it on a regular basis. And one of the prayers is asking God that during this day, don't let me go someplace that at the end of the day, I would be embarrassed that Mm -hmm. you were there with me or Mm -hmm. that I wouldn't want to bring you. Uh, And that, that could put a sort of a negative idea, put a hold on, on some ideas or attitudes Mm -hmm. or actions. Uh, But that's helpful to realize that he's always with us, no matter what we choose and, and how we choose it. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. So you would, as I said, you and I work in a, in an environment where there is there's encouragement and mm-hmm. and accountability. As I said, it's not perfect because you and I are here. <laughs> but what about the person in the in a hostile environment? I think what would someone on a on a construction in a construction job, and not that that's the only place, but where there's people who could care less about God, who are foul language or bad mm-hmm. backbiting or a lot of uh, just um, negative kind of uh, of attitudes. And um, how how can that person be a Monday morning missionary? I, I don't know if you can answer that, but because that's mm-hmm. huge. Yeah, it is. We live in a some kind of, what of a bubble here and other, a lot of people don't. Right. Yeah. Uh, Perhaps the best thing that they can do is remembering that Jesus is right there with them the Uh whole time and uh, choose to interact the way that they would want to if if Jesus was standing right there. Uh, We don't need to, even if you do work in a hostile environment, you don't need to sink to the level of pettiness or backbiting or lying to get ahead. You can live with integrity there without necessarily um, bringing your Bible to the workplace and standing on a podium and preaching to those you work with. Uh, Just living your life, um, kind of that what would Jesus do mentality, Mm -hmm. is testimony to those that um, don't know anything about Jesus. And when they see you different, then that can invite the conversation. So a, f- a phrase that I've heard that you may be the only Bible some oh, people yeah. mm-hmm. read or see. And uh, I think it is noticed when yeah. when uh, there are some differences. And, you know, to keep that humble, to keep yourself humble and to ask the Spirit to not make you proud in, in how humble you are and all those is, is uh, important mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, Tim was talking about location gods, that mm. some gods in the... I ran across, some of us are reading uh, the devotionals that are going through the kings. Mm-hmm. And there's sort of a, somewhat of an obscure uh, story about King Ahab, and he was fighting the Armenians and, uh, or Arameans, excuse me. And, and the Arameans said, well, the Israelites won because their God is a God of the mountains. So let's go and attack them in the plains. And sure. some verses later, it's as if God is saying, well, I'll show you. And he gave them victory in the plains in as the well plains too. because he is, he's got it all. That That's amazing. <laughs> it, yeah. It is wonderful to know that our God is the God in the mountains and in the plains yeah. and on the sea and all of that. We don't need to, yeah, we don't need to look for God in other places. He's everywhere. Right. I remember my mom had a plaque. I think she'd cross-stitched it or something, and somewhat of an older one that said, uh, bloom where you are planted. Mm-hmm. And wherever that might be in, unfortunately, a hostile environment, but that might, obviously, that was where God wants you. And in a good environment, uh, just to take the 
understanding that you are there not by chance, but right. which which sometimes is difficult to to know how that fits all together as well. Yep. Um, Tim also mentioned something about opening sacred spaces to those who have been excluded. Um, sounded like a pretty big challenge, mm -hmm. one that gets underneath some of my own attitudes, and and I had to ask myself what. What are those places that have been that need to be opened, or that have that have excluded other people? And yeah. immediately, I thought, was it here at at First Reformed in the worship time, or uh, can you any thoughts came to you about that? Well, we do tend to be a upper middle class. Dutch heritage church, and and that's all good. I I mean, our heritage is there, right? But um, Jesus didn't just go and talk to the people that were like him. He did for others as well. And I think I think Pastor Tim's right that we need to open up our doors even more. And that that starts with opening up our hearts and reaching Again. out to people yeah. uh, who are not like us outside of this building, and then inviting them into our building. Uh, it, it it is true that as uh, that church in general, way back when, that it has always been kind of an exclusive club, and that we try to make people mold to that club before they are part uh, yeah. of our club, and we've been challenged. God's been challenging the church as, as a whole that that's not. How we're supposed to do things. That's not what he did. Right. Uh, he didn't say, well, everybody needs to fit in this mold or anything like that. He he talked to those that were outcasts, that were outside of society. And we need to do more of that and care less about people um, operating and acting a lot like us. Boy, that's but sad. care about where their hearts are. Which comes back to where our hearts are, huh? Yeah. I was reading about a, a pastor who was a wonderful orator, and he had hundreds of people coming and many conversions and so forth. And, and some of the other, his clergy friends pointed the finger and made fun of him because he was touching the lives of those who were somewhat outcast, and they mm -hmm. were believing in Jesus. And, and this man went on to say, isn't that what... What we're supposed to be doing is to be reaching those who, interacting with those who don't don't know the the Lord, and yeah. going from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any other suggestions or impact that that you had from listening to Pastor Tim's sermon? That. Well, it is challenging to uh, make sure that we live every aspect of our life uh, in God's hand and in. In, under his lordship and his leading. I think that that's a very good challenge to have, regardless of whether we work or we come here to church. Every every moment needs to be under his lordship. Tim mentioned that all of our ings, I-N-G-S, mm -hmm. need to be under God's, uh, for God's glory. Our yeah. buying, our selling, our, our playing, traveling, mm -hmm. practicing, exercising, uh, interacting, working, sometimes that's really vague to understand, but even to to know that God's God cares about all those areas and yeah. because he owns all those areas. And uh, it's so good to know that His he's willing to give his spirit to help us as we submit to that, yeah. to him, to help us understand, to mm -hmm. talk with other, other believers and uh, just work out some of the details of, of what all those things mean. Yep. Yeah, that's very good. I think we have one more week of Monday morning missionaries here at church, and Pastor Mark's going to talk about how we can bring God into our school. Oh. Sometimes that's uh, easier if it's a, a Christian school, but uh, mm -hmm. so thankful that we have so many teachers who in the public school who sense that they've been called to do that, to be a teacher, yes. not just a job, and that our, mm -hmm. our children uh, have that kind of influence. Yeah. So uh, 
April, why don't you uh, tell our viewing audience how they can let us know their questions or comments uh, as we continue on with uh, Tell Me More. Yes. So if you do want to send in your comment and question, we'd love to address it here at Tw Tell Me More. And you can email it to tellmemore at frcoc.org. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Thank Have a you, good day. Tom. Yeah. yeah, you too.